Hello everyone. Uh, thanks for joining today's session. And today's session is about tip, uh, tips and tricks to migrate from Eager to Open Telemetry. So first things first. How many of you are using Eager already? Okay. Open Telemetry. Have you started using Open Telemetry? Nice. Okay. Then I think you will understand most of the Eager parts and Open Telemetry parts that I'll be discussing today. So the agenda for today is uh, prerequisites first, uh, setting the uh, uh, ground uh, correct first, like what are the expectations from the talk and other things, and why we have to migrate. And we will also go through a brief uh, architectural overview of both Eager and Open Telemetry. Uh, and we will be talking about levels of migration, and I also have a demo on how we migrate an application. And the last one is Eager and Open Telemetry boundaries. So today, everyone is a bit uh, uh, worried and confused that how, how and where do I plug Eager over Open Telemetry? So about me, my name is Vinit Potlapati. I'm a product manager at Timescale. Uh, I work on the observability products at Timescale, primarily focused on PromScale and TOPS. I'm also a maintainer of Open Telemetry Operator. So if you're already using an Open Telemetry Operator, would love to hear out your experience. And if you would like to check out the products that I work, uh, PromScale and TOPS, they are open source. So the links are uh, shared at the bottom. Uh, it's Timescale slash PromScale and Timescale slash TOPS. Okay. So the prerequisites. So throughout the session, I'll also be using term as OTEL. So uh, open telemetry synonym or a short form as OTEL. So the, co the commonly used uh, phrase. So I'll be using that more often. And this talk is focused on traces. So open telemetry is also getting into metrics, logs, and other things. But we will be uh, confined and focusing on traces. Uh, this talk isn't intended to push the migration or I'm not selling anything here. I'll just uh, uh, share what are the ways, how you can mix and match the things and what are the upsides of migrating. And let's understand the components first uh, before we get into the talk. So we know there are multiple components involved in, uh, in uh, tracing uh, both in Eager and Open Telemetry. So the instrumentation layer usually has API and SDK. So in Eager, uh, we use Open Tracing API and the SDK is uh, Eager Client Libraries. Uh, and uh, the agent and collector is uh, all Eager. So Eager also has an agent and collector and it also offers some st uh, native storage options within the collector. Uh, like Cassandra Elasticsearch, and there is a gRPC-based uh, uh, mechanism to plug uh, the external databases as well. And uh, Agar also has a visualization layer, which we'll be discussing later today, and how uh, it helps you to visualize the traces even if you're using open telemetry. And in open telemetry, all it has is the instrumentation layer and the collector layer. So Agar is all the way from instrumentation to uh, storage and visualization, but open telemetry is on the instrumentation and collection uh, stage. Okay, why you have to migrate? Now we have uh, been hearing Agar and been using Agar for a while, and uh, Agar has served uh, really well for most of us, and people love Agar. And Open Telemetry has been announced in 2019 Cubicon NA, so exactly it's like four years uh, in San Diego. And since then, the project has been uh, matured, and uh, it's expanding itself into different observability signals and adding new capabilities. So. Let's discuss on what are those capabilities and uh, why does uh, migration would make sense. So the first thing is Agar client libraries have been announced end of life support uh, uh, earlier this year. And uh, Agar community and the maintainers also are supportive and advocating towards open telemetry SDK. So if you are using Agar already, you have to move from Agar client libraries to uh, the open telemetry SDK and we'll be uh, briefly talking on uh, how to do the instrumentation layer migration. And the second one is open telemetry is a new standard as we all know for instrumentation and collection of data. So it takes some uh, industry best practices that were part of open tracing, open census and all. And it also adds new capabilities that were not existing in um, uh, eager instrumentation side. Uh, uh, so, and the collection layer is really rich. It gives you options to uh, configure different uh, sources and destinations to ship your data. And and the last thing is uh, Open Telemetry does support auto instrumentation, which means uh, you don't have to do any code changes. You can just uh, uh, run a sidecar and it just works. So levels of migration. So there are two levels of migration. One is the instrumentation layer. The other one is the collector layer. Uh, 
before we get into the uh, migrations and how it's done, let's do a quick uh, walkthrough uh, in Agar and open telemetry architecture. So the first slide is the Agar architecture. You can see on the left uh, side, there is an application, the Agar client and the Agar agent. So the application is instrumented using Agar that's, uh, uh, and the uh, spans are being uh, pushed to Agar agent. And from there you can see uh, there is Agar collector and the database and the UI. So this is the complete ecosystem and the components that are involved in Agar architecture. And the Spark jobs are something very optional. If you need them, you can run. Uh, coming to the open telemetry architecture, so here in the open telemetry architecture, we do not see the UI layer or the storage layer. As I said, it's all about the instrumentation and uh, data processing pipeline, which is open telemetry collector itself. Uh, so you can see uh, here uh, open telemetry uh, collector being run as an agent. So, uh, so there is so much of confusion between this agent and collector. So the collect uh, the agent is something if it is ran within the host or as a sidecar to the application, then we say it as an agent. But it's the same collector that's being uh, running, and collector acts as a centralized uh, processing pipeline where directly your applications can uh, send the spans to the collector or your agents can send the data to the collector. Okay, let's start with the instrumentation layer. So you can see in the instrumentation layer, as I said, there is this API and SDK. So to understand what are the components involved in API, you can see this image. It has the tracer API, context API, and the meter API. So the meter API is for metrics. And in the SDK, you can see there is this propagator, span processor, and uh, aggregator. So these are the functionalities that the API and SDK offer you during the instrumentation. So as I said, the migration can be done in instrumentation using two ways, which is open telemetry shim and complete reinstrumentation. So we will be doing a demo and discussing more about the reinstrumentation, but uh, there are libraries already available uh, in the internet uh, on uh, how to do the open telemetry migration using the shim. There is a blog post in Medium which uses the Java ap application as a demo to migrate from open uh, the Agar client libraries to the uh, open telemetry using the shim. So the shim is all about it consists of a set of classes that implement the open tracing while still using the uh, open uh, open telemetry construct. So with a very minimal code change, like uh, the blog post that's been uh, authored by Juras is uh, published in the uh, internet. So it's already available and it just uh, hardly takes five minutes to migrate by just swapping out the dependencies and the imports. And the second one is uh, it's all, it it's also helps you to do uh, to get onto the open telemetry SDK in no time, you don't have to do the complete reinstrumentation. So if you have less bandwidth and if you want to use uh, some sa client-based sampling in the open telemetry or you want to use open telemetry SDK for some reason, you can definitely start with a shim. And this is the blog post that uh, I've been uh, referencing to that's been mentioned here. And the complete reinstrumentation. So why you have to do the complete reinstrumentation? So the complete reinstrumentation offers a OTIL as a package. So you get all the capabilities right from the scratch from the code uh, of open telemetry, the semantics. Uh, and in future, you can also expand your open telemetry instrumentation into metrics and logs. So this is just a, a starting point for you if you get started with open telemetry. and. Uh, it's also easily integrated with auto instrumentation applications. So if you if you want to do an auto instrumentation for few applications, and if you have other applications, if you uh, which you need more granular details, so the auto instrumentation gives more of a higher level uh, uh, traces and spans with. Uh, Manual instrumentation, you have, you'll have more flexibility over what you want to capture and what you want to measure. So it, it easily gets integrated with auto instrumentation and the normal apps. So it's demo time. Let's just get started. So my demo is uh, is, is a clone from uh, Open Tracing tutorial. So there is an Open Tracing tutorial in uh, uh, in GitHub uh, authored by Yuri to understand how the instrumentation works. So I'm just taking the same application. Uh, I'll be showing you what's the Agar instrumentation like and how's the Open Telemetry uh, instrumentation is like. And uh, it's a very simple app. So we have a greeting client, and we have a formatter and a publisher. So the greeting client basically uh, sends a request to the formatter, and the formatter basically formats the string. And then greeting client publishes the string to the publisher just to do an STD out. So the demo is available in this GitHub repository. So I just pushed the demo to, uh, to the GitHub. OK. 
I hope the demo works. <laughs> okay. So let's uh, jump into the code before we run it and see the differences. So I have the Agar application here, and the, this is the Agar client go. Uh, so no, the, this is a client application which basically sends the request to the formatter and the publisher. So here you can see it's all the normal code. It's nothing fancy. It's a main. Uh, here you have the main. And the, in, the interesting part is here in the tracing, you have to see the init tracer. So we all know that if you want to start with the tracing, there is an init function which basically gives you the tracer. And then uh, you start uh, using the tracer, uh, referencing it across your uh, uh, life cycle of the code. So here we have started. Uh, instrumenting and we are saying okay start start span and then finish and here we are also using the uh, baggage uh, as an example how you can set the baggage uh, to do the context propagation and pulling it so if you do not know uh, the feature of baggage so it's a, it's basically it gives you an ability to attach metadata during the context propagation without uh, a need to change the API. So if you have to send uh, some metadata from your application A to all the way down after four requests, you can just put it in the context and it just flows through uh, the last application that you want to send it. So without any uh, disturbance or changing the intermediate applications to capture it and forward it forward. So it, it just gets attached to the context. So here, uh, we are calling the format string function and it's making an HTTP call to uh, 8081. And uh, we are injecting a few data, so the, some data which is context and HTTP headers. And this is HTTP headers carrier here. And yeah, we are doing a request. And yeah, then we are also calling the print hello, which is a publisher service. Here is the publisher service. So yeah. And the publish uh, the formatter service is nothing but a server just running, uh, just waiting for the request to format the string and send it out. And if you see the publisher service, the publisher service is all about just take the request and do an STD out. Okay. So first we will run the Agar all-in-one, which is uh, which basically runs the Agar UI, Agar collector, and uh, in-memory storage by default. I hope the font is visible. Okay. So the eager collector is up, eager all in one. And now let's let's run the eager application. So now I'm first running the publisher. Go run publisher.go. It's up. Okay. So, so I'm sending a string as a greeting called hello to uh, Cubicon from a my client to the formatter and then publisher. So we can see now the formatter is running, the publisher is running, and the client is uh, here. So first, let's check the eager UI. So as I just uh, just started the collector, so now you can see. Uh, okay, there are no uh, services or no data because we haven't yet pushed the data to Jaeger. It's just the Jaeger UI, Jaeger query uh, spans itself. And now I'm just doing hello Cubicon, and the demo just works as this is authored by Jurassi. Like this is this is not uh, not Jurassi Yuri. So it's from Open Tracing demo. And now let's check the traces here. So the traces are here. And you can see it's, it says hello. And the, the, you can see the request has went from hello world to formatter to publisher. Now let's just check the open telemetry code and check how it works. So I'll be a bit quick here. Yeah. 
the open this is the open telemetry uh, instrumentation so now you can see i have uh, used the hotel trace baggage and all the inputs here so i'm not using anything from eager or open telemetry and it's it's the same you just init the tracer and then you can start the context and uh, I, I feel a few areas it's even simplifies for example doing the context uh, baggage and headers it felt easy for me uh, at least in go and here we are doing an http request uh, to uh, formatter and here you have publisher so let's now run open telemetry and check the spans Okay, the formatter is up. And now let's do the same from the client, for, but it's instrumented using hotel. Uh, okay. So I'm just doing the same uh, now. Hello, Cubicon. Uh. Is it saying? Did I change anything? No. Okay, let's just check it out. It's format or. Okay, I'll just give it another 30 seconds. Let's just check. I just run. Let's just let's check. It's is did the spans come out? Yeah. Now the spans aren't out from open telemetry yet. Okay, I think I got it. Yep, now it just worked. It's just the comma. Yep, now you, here you can see the greeting client. And uh, it's just a few seconds ago, it's been, uh, it has come from the open telemetry. And here we can go to the formatter service and check the tags. So now here it says uh, the Go client and it's instrumented using the library opentelemetry.io. So these are the spans from uh, open telemetry instrumented using open telemetry and they're the same. So this is what I wanted to show. It's a very small demo, but it includes all uh, context propagation using the baggage, doing an init trace and all like uh, the basic stuff that we use uh, during the instrumentation. And yeah, that's, that's the demo I had just to show uh, how easy it is like uh, to run and use Agar alongside open telemetry instrumentation. So now the Agar collector is running and uh, the recent feature in Agar has supported uh, ingesting the OTLP uh, traces uh, coming from your application. So the data is coming in the OTLP uh, format as the exporter. And now we are pushing it to the uh, Agar. And another interesting fact that I missed to explain is that okay if you see the tracer here uh, you can uh, i have written a code in a way that uh, uh, you can 
Okay, you, I, I have written a code in this way that now you can configure the Agar endpoint or open telemetry endpoint. It just uses the uh, any tracer. If you want to use Agar endpoint, you want to send to the Agar. It, it, it's it's this uh, init provider for Agar. If you want to use open telemetry, you can use open telemetry. It's just a uh, logic to send traces that are being instrumented using open telemetry in both Agar and open telemetry formats. So if you have some limitation on the back end that you have to send traces only in the Agar format, you can use uh, some something like this, and it just works. OK. And the question comes as the context propagation. Like, now you have tens of applications that are already instrumented using Agar, and you, you are starting a new application uh, from scratch for the development. The, always the question is, do I need to start with Agar, or do I need to start with open telemetry? So the recommendation is you should start with open telemetry, and the context propagation just works, because Agar supports, Agar supports the Agar B3 and W3. See, uh, context propagation and open telemetry does support all three. But if you have different applications talking to the same application, in different uh, context propagation. The open telemetry SDK also supports uh, uh, enabling or uh, uh, using multiple contexts at the same time. So if an application is instrumented using open telemetry, it can understand, uh, it can receive the uh, request uh, using the context propagation eager W3C and B3 at a, at a time. So you don't have to uh, just stick with only one context propagation. So it just works. And there is an article in Medium uh, written on explaining the same, how you can do mix and match of context propagation between the applications. OK, the impact. So now we have seen uh, the migration and how you can do uh, the migration. Now what's the impact after you migrate? So obviously, you have an improved tracer implementation. As I said, the baggage and other things just work. And the switch to the open telemetry SDK uh, while using uh, the open uh, open tracing is also a possibility as using the shim just makes this ha uh, easy for you and there is also an improved performance i keep reading in the readme and in other places so the uh, open telemetry sdks are more performant and access to open telemetry framework plugins so we are uh, there is a uh, each language has its own uh, way of integrating into the sdk so it it has uh, feature rich uh, framework plugins and now uh, let's understand migrating in the collector layer. So as I said, we have two levels of uh, migration. One is the instrumentation layer that we have seen. That's the code. And now we will see the migration into open telemetry without touching the code or without disturbing your applications. So this is uh, the, the usual architecture when you are deploying Agar collector. Uh, and on the left and on the right, you can see how you can add, uh, add open telemetry collector into your existing architecture. So you don't have to uh, do any uh, open telemetry code changes uh, in your applications, you can just use open telemetry collector because open telemetry collector can uh, receive the data from eager and different formats. So we'll be talking about how you can configure the collectors in the upcoming slides. Uh, but this slide is all about uh, if you have an architecture as left eager collector, your applications are sending traces from eager to the collector and it's going to the storage, storage backend. All you have to do is put an open telemetry collector in between the applications and eager collector. So the question now comes is why you need an uh, open telemetry collector when you already have an Agar collector. So the open telemetry collector eases the uh, eases the uh, data collection pipeline. So if you have uh, metrics, traces, logs all uh, coming into uh, from your applications, you can just run open telemetry collector and it can do uh, it can process all this. You can configure the pipelines. Uh, for example, you can also use span metrics processor, which is which basically generates the metrics out of your spans, and the processor is available in the collector. And here uh, in the bottom, I'm just putting a storage backend as prompt scale. So it just works with open telemetry and Agar. And let's understand the differences between the Agar and open telemetry collector. So the Agar collector has more flexible sampling, whereas open telemetry collector has uh, uh, sampling uh, processors too, but uh, the Agar collector has more uh, in terms of, for example, uh, the adaptive sampling has been uh, uh, released in Agar 126, so it's available in collector. I'm not sure it's there in the open telemetry, but yeah, you have wide uh, uh, options for you for the sampling in Agar collector. And in Agar collector, you have entry uh, uh, storage options where you can use uh, Cassandra Elasticsearch or use the gRPC based uh, storage plugin for the backend. In Open Telemetry Collector, as I said, you can use receivers, exporters, and processors, which helps you to build the data pipelines, uh, com data coming from different sources to the different dest uh, destinations. 
So this is the hotel uh, collector configuration. You can see on the left, it has receivers, exporters, and services. So in receivers, you basically configure what are your sources, where will you receive the data from, and in the exporters, you will basically configure where you want to forward the data to. In services, you will basically map these receivers and exporters to build a pipeline. So on the right-hand side, you can see my open telemetry collector is receiving data from applications which are instrumented using Eager, and uh, in the middle, you can see the applications being instrumented using open telemetry and uh, uh, you also have a Prometheus uh, receiver which can scrape the targets to get the uh, uh, metrics. So you can just configure the receivers and it just works. And even during the exporters, you can parallelly stream the data uh, to your SaaS backends or in-house in storage systems anywhere. So you can also duplicate the data between systems. And uh, if you want to move away from one storage engine to another, there is zero lock-in. All you have to do is change some configuration in the open telemetry collector and it just works. So this is the anatomy of the open telemetry collector. So you can see, uh, if you see the collector on the left side, it's all receivers. It's OTLP receivers, Zipkin, Eager receivers. So if you have any legacy applications or any other applications which are sending you some data in different formats, OTIL collectors should definitely have the receivers for them. I think there are already like 20 plus receivers in the open telemetry collector country. We can just use them. And these are the exporters. And you also have processors where you can translate the data, uh, do some kind of sampling, uh, filtering, and everything. And the exporters basically map uh, this data or send the data to the backends and the impact. So if you use the open telemetry collector, as I said, uh, uh, this makes the transition much easier and it's easy to start. It's all about just running the open telemetry collector and it's, it gives you the ability to build the pipelines on how you want to send the data and where you want to send the data uh, and all. Yep. And uh, in now you have seen in the uh, in the second uh, migration, which is, okay, you can add open telemetry collector uh, in, in the with your Eager collector. So now we will also see uh, how, why you have to use OTIL in Eager. So you can receive data from multiple sources and process the data using wide uh, data processing tools. And you can also export it to the multiple backends. And it also supports uh, metrics, traces, and other things. So here you can see uh, it's the same, but uh, here we are adding the open uh, uh, open telemetry collector just in front of Eager collector so that it just works. It just sends the data to the Eager collector, whereas in the past we have seen, uh, we are just replacing the Eager collector with open telemetry collector. So it just works. So if you have any storage backend that's compatible with open telemetry collector, you just uh, put the uh, exporter saying that, hey, I'm, I want to send the data to Cassandra or uh, PromScale. You just configure the exporter and it just sends the data. Here, if you are using uh, Eager in-memory or Badger storage, you can still use the Eager collector, but all you have to do is uh, configure Eager exporter and it forwards the data coming from your applications to open telemetry collector to the Eager collector. Yep. And the impact is you can get best in both the worlds. So you can, if you have any sampling mechanisms that needs to be done, you can do a sampling in uh, open telemetry collector and you can do a sampling in Eager collector too. But it gets complex. You just need to take some conscious decisions on how you want to do. But you can leverage the uh, in-memory and Badger storages. And uh, Eager also offers a gRPC-based remote write plugin. So it just plugs into the databases that offer that integration. And querying and visualizing the traces. So if you move to the open telemetry collector, uh, there is no uh, path to how you connect to your traces, how you visualize the traces, and where do you store the traces. So the open telemetry project is all about uh, uh, collecting uh, the data, instrumenting the data, and collecting the data. Whereas with Eager, you can use the, the Eager UI to visualize the data. So if you are moving from Eager to open telemetry, you should make sure how does your Eager UI integrate to for querying the traces? Yep. And these are the OTIL and Eager boundaries. So on the left side, you can see uh, it's OTIL is all about the API, SDK, and the collector, whereas uh, Eager is the query and matured native storage backends. So in future, the Eager will be evolving into a platform for uh, traces, whereas uh, open telemetry will be more like a instrumentation and a collection pipeline for all the observability data. Yep. And in conclusion, all I want to say is uh, start with OTIL in some capacity. It could be the instrumentation layer using the shim, or it could be a complete re-instrumentation, or you can just introduce the OTIL collector and start uh, uh, using the span metric processor or the other uh, features from the open telemetry collector. And uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Thanks for joining my talk. 
Uh, before I end my talk, I just want to give, uh, just show you uh, the Eager UI has recently launched a monitoring tab which can give you, uh, which can visualize you uh, this red metrics coming from your spans. So now you can, with Open Telemetry Collector, you can use the span metric processor. It generates the metrics and you can send it to a Prometheus uh, backend. And the Eager UI directly uh, queries the data from your Prometheus and visualizes this. So this is not built. Uh, it's it's all uh, out of the box built by Eager UI. All you have to do is run an open telemetry collector and configure the span metric processor. So it's really cool. I just wanted to show it. If you're using Eager, you can leverage this feature. Yep. And let's get back to questions. I'll, I'll be around. Yeah, if you have questions, uh, just you can join me.